Hey friends, this is Sketchjard and I'm Marla. I'm so glad you're here. Today we are drawing rubies. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna be drawing rubies today. We're gonna to draw all three views. So what that means is we're gonna draw a top view, we're gonna draw a side view, and then we're gonna draw a three quarter view. So before I get started, I just wanna show you the tools I'm gonna to be using to draw this. I think that'll be really helpful for understanding. I'm not sponsored. These are just the tools that I felt worked best uh, for this tutorial. For the specifics, I list everything in the description box down below, so you can definitely check there too. So the first thing is an HB pencil. This is like a medium, uh, medium dark pencil that's great for just putting in the framework or the skeleton of the drawing, which is what I'm going to be doing today, is just getting that basic shape in before I add in the color. And the first layer of color is going to be with a Sharpie marker. A This is just a basic red Sharpie marker. Um, I'm going to be using a brush tip marker. You can definitely go to the drugstore and just use uh, the regular style of Sharpie. I tried that one too. Um, the only reason I'm using a brush marker is because the color goes on so much quicker and just um, easier, but the regular Sharpie marker works just as good because I tried, I tried them both out. So the next thing I'll be using to lay in the color are colored pencils. And I picked three different ones. I'm gonna be using a white. And then I'm gonna be using a red that matches the Sharpie marker color, just that, that middle red. And then I'm using a very dark purple red to lay in the darkest shading. Uh, I found that using a black was just a little bit too harsh for this tutorial, like because I have to like really blend all the colors together. I think if all you had was like a white or red and a black, you could use that. You would just wanna like shade a little less with the black. You'd wanna be like a little um, lighter handed with that so that way it didn't get too heavy in your drawing. And then the last thing I'm gonna be using is a white ink pen. Um, this is to add in like the dimension and the sparkle and a little bit of shading. If you don't have one of these white ink pens, I think they're easier to find nowadays, but if you can't find one, use white paint, use white out, use um, nail enamel, just get like a toothpick or a fine tip brush and just put in those those little details. Or if you decide you don't even need that, I think the drawing works just as well uh, without that. So I'm really excited about this today. Uh, let's get drawing. So to get started, uh, each of the squares I have drawn here measures three inches by three inches. And then I've split each of those squares down the middle horizontally and vertically. And I've done this so that way there are guidelines for drawing each of the views, the top view, the side view, and the three quarter view. And as you can see here, I've started drawing the top view. Um, I drew diagonal lines at the corners so that way it would be an easier guideline for drawing the circle shape. I really wanted to be able to show how to draw the circle freehanded, but with just a little bit of help with like a ruler and putting some guidelines in. So the next shape I'm putting in here is the inner circle portion of uh, the ruby and this measures 1.5 inches. I kind of just want to give a sense. I'm going to be adding more or talking about more of the actual dimensions today just so that way you have a sense of what I'm doing and how large everything is. I think in your drawing if you drew something a little smaller you might not have to pay as much attention to it, but also I, I do think it's helpful. So this video is definitely, it's going to be more technical today, but um, I really want to make sure that you're, you understand how to do this for your own drawings. Uh, and I think, I think it'll be helpful. So I've drawn the inner circles and I, in the middle of the uh, second inner circle, I have 
put a dot around each side to show where the middle point is. And I've started drawing in the facets. And if you see how I'm doing this here, I would recommend putting in the facets like this because it just makes it easier and less confusing. I tried a bunch of different ways, like um, kind of doing like one edge first and then the other edge, like inner and outer. And I just found it was more confusing. This seemed to be the clearest way to do it. I've drawn like a very uh, medium level, I would say, uh, dime, or ruby shape here. But it is still, there is still a little bit of like complicated elements. And so anything you can do to make it easier on yourself, uh, I would definitely recommend. So I'm getting the side view penciled in here. Uh, this is one point, the top edge is 1.25 inches, and then the bottom edge that you saw me draw in is half an inch. And I've raised this up from the middle, like the, um, the edge of the diamond is a little higher, just because of my personal preference. I, I felt like it was just easier to draw everything in and all the pieces in of the ruby, um, the side view, by just raising raising that middle edge up a bit. But depending on what your drawing was, you could use that middle line as your guideline and I, th I think you would be fine. I just wanted this to be a very true kind of ruby kind of diamond shape uh, for the drawing. I'm also using an HB pencil to pencil all this in. That's really important. You want to use a pencil that's not too late, but also not too dark. So I don't recommend using a pencil any darker than an HB pencil. And I'll be able to explain why in, in a little bit when we start putting in all the color. So I'm drawing in the facets now. I used a very similar technique to what I did for the top view. And again, this is just for making it as easy as possible because this is still kind of like a, a complicated shape with a lot of elements. I don't recommend just drawing straight X's. I recommend just putting in the angles in that sort of triangle shape like you saw me do. And the reason is, is because when you start putting in just solid line X's for the facets, it does something where it doesn't, it stops looking like facets. It stop lo stops looking like the shape that you you are going for. So I just recommend that. So I'm putting in the three quarter view now and I've dropped the lines down a little bit because this three quarter view, as you saw in the introduction, is a bit tilted. It's tilted forward a bit. It's a combination of the top view and the side view to make its own shape. And so those measurements drop down a little bit so that way you can see that top portion of the ruby shape. I'm getting this drawn in here just so you know I I at the top portion measure I measured in 0.5 like I measured in five eighths of an inch so it still is one and a half inches wide just like the top view just like the side view I've made all the measurements match up equally and that's just something I want to add in there like so that way when you're drawing your stuff like if you're wondering like oh do I make them exactly the same measurement uh, the answer is yes um, you're just putting it at different angles and at different heights to achieve the look you're going for to achieve kind of a, a realistic look. I'm going through now and I'm adding the halfway like edges uh, for this. As you can see, I and I've said uh, I said a little earlier, this is like a medium level drawing. It isn't the most complicated. It's not the simplest. Uh, I wanted to make it as simple as possible. Uh, but having tried several different ways to draw this, I had to put in some complicated elements so that way it still looked realistic. 
Uh, having said that, not all of the elements are in. Like, as you can see, like just from my example, uh, these glass rubies and diamonds I have above the drawings, I haven't put in all the facets uh, because I just want this to be something that you can sit down in a couple hours and do. I don't want you to have to spend all afternoon um, drawing this out or trying to figure out where to put everything. Although I will say, if you want to make your drawing more complicated, if you want to put more details in, this is a great place to start for doing that. This is like, this is kind of a starter and then you can just go off and, and draw it however you want. So I've got everything penciled in and I am taking a block eraser, just a, a regular block plastic eraser and I'm erasing around the edges. I don't usually go into the erasing detail like in my other videos but for this it's actually very important so after I speed through and get the outer edges erased we're going to talk about how to erase all the rest of the lines it's actually really an important step so I've taken like a uh, a pencil shaped eraser a smaller eraser so that I have more control and I have I'm erasing the outer edge this is the best place to start clean up the outer edge so then you know where to go from there when you're erasing everything and get that cleaned up exactly how you want. I'm now erasing the inner circle. And again, this is to get it cleaned up um, so that way I know where to erase next and I can see how things are looking for my drawing. What you're gonna do next is you're going to erase the inner portion of the facets and you just do this one by one. I don't recommend you skip around because it gets really confusing, like all the lines all of a sudden kind of blur together and it's tough to tell like, okay, which line am I supposed to keep and which line should I uh, get rid of? For this drawing today, Definitely the erasing is a step that is just as important as the drawing and the coloring. And so um, just take your time, get this cleaned up exactly how you want it, and um, treat this exactly the same way as if you're drawing, but like in reverse. You know, you're just deciding what elements to take away. So I'm erasing the side view now, and I'm using the same technique. I'm erasing all around and cleaning that up exactly how I want it, uh, then I'm gonna go through and start erasing uh, inside the ruby shape. And I start by just erasing the lower portion. It's very clear which parts, which lines need to be erased. And again, I can see how things are looking and kind of gauge uh, if everything's how I want it. And then I go through and erase this inner faceted portion and again just one by one uh, going through from left to right and just really making this as simple on myself as possible because again those lines can get super confusing even if you've only like I just drew that and I'm still looking at it while I'm erasing and just like reminding myself like which lines are supposed to be there and which ones to take away. So I'm on the three quarter view now, again, erasing around there, getting this cleaned up. This is gonna be a little more complicated for the erasing portion. There's a lot of lines in there, but if we follow what we've learned from the previous two views, then it's easier to do this one. So start with the top, clean that up, get it looking how you want, and then I'm gonna erase the inner portions of the bottom, and then I'm gonna start taking those lines away uh, from the inside, from the from the top portion of the facets, and then I'll go through and just one by one erase inside uh, the rest of the faceted areas. And again, just just take your time. This is actually drawing. This whole tutorial was actually really fun. I really love doing this. Um, I love taking elements that are seemingly complicated and then just like kind of trying to break it down and make it. Um, something that all of us can sit down and draw and all of us can kind of put our own, be inspired by and put our own um, ideas and thoughts into. So I have this pretty well cleaned up and I'm taking my HB pencil and I'm just lightly going over the areas where maybe I erased a little too much. Maybe I'm just trying to like make the line look a little bit more how I want, like this circle, I'm trying to make it look a little bit more round. 
this is a great opportunity to do this. So for this red, the red of the ruby, don't press too hard. If you look at this video here and you see about how dark the pencil lines are, this is about how dark you want the pencil lines in your own drawing. The reason is, is for this reason right here. You're gonna take that red Sharpie and you're gonna color in the whole area. And you want the pencil to show through, but you do not want the pencil to be super dark. You just want the pencil to be dark enough that you can see the lines. So that way you know you have your shape set. I don't usually do this either. I don't usually uh, spin the paper around in my drawing, but I'm doing that because I want these lines to be really tight and crisp. Like this really sets the shape of what um, the, the ruby is going to look like for all the views. So I'm uh, manipulating the paper. I'm turning the paper in the ways that will best... Um, best help me make those lines really tight and crisp. I, real, I will say I don't normally do that in my videos because I think that's super distracting. I really try to draw the video with the paper kept in one position um, so that it's more helpful when, when you're watching. But when I'm actually drawing, I'm moving the paper all over the page and I, I or all over my, my desk or my drawing board. And I encourage you to do the same thing. As you can see here, I've got this, um, I'm getting this colored in and you can see these lines. It's not super dark, uh, but you can see them. And this is the great thing about Sharpie markers is that it doesn't smear the lines underneath. It keeps the lines really clean and it just lays that color on top of your paper. So I'm getting this last one in. Since this is a combination of both that top view and that side view, this one's a little tough. Take your time, practice, practice this a few times so you can get those really sharp edges and corners and then get that um, round shape at the top. And as you can see, this really this is gonna um, really be the guiding shape for uh, what the ruby is gonna look like. This kind of sets it all in place for what we're gonna do next, which is uh, take a white Prismacolor pencil and start drawing in all the lines. Um, this is why you want those pencil lines to show through because you're now inverting the color. You're taking your white Prismacolor and you're drawing over all those lines. Um, and if some of the pencil shows through, don't worry about that because all the steps will will get. We're going to get it all covered up. We're putting in this base drawing this base these baselines so you still have those guidelines for where the facets are uh, in your drawing. We're going to add a lot of layers here. We're going to get these colors really blended and beautiful. Um, that's why we don't, we're not going to have to add a lot of the facets is because in place of adding the facets, I'm going to be really blending the colors and really using these layers of color to create the transparency and the, create the effect of this being like a really, um, beautiful, shiny, uh, jewel. So I've got that all, the white lines all penciled in. I'm taking my red Prismacolor and I am now coloring over it everything. It may seem like, okay, why did you pencil in that white? But now you're going to cover it all up. But the reason for that is, is this is beginning the process of blending all the colors together. And you still want those guidelines. You still want those guidelines underneath the red that you're coloring. And if you don't put the white guidelines in first, then the red will cover up all your pencil lines and you won't be able to see what you're, what you're drawing. You won't be able to see where the facets are. So you put those white lines in first, then you put the, the red over the top of it and just evenly shade all this through. Like just, um, you don't have to press too hard, but make sure, make sure you have full coverage because this, this base layer of red uh, colored pencil is going to be how you move the color and blend the color. So now I'm taking this white Prismacolor and again I'm 
um, penciling in all the lines. And as you can see, now the colors have started to blend together. The lines don't look really even. It's like a little bit blotchy. It's a little bit uneven. This is what you want because um, this is how it starts looking like there's a light shining through your drawing. You don't want super solid, perfect lines because then that's something different. You could definitely do that. It would just be that it looks less realistic. And what we're going for here is to for this drawing to be um, to have very realistic elements, but in a simple way. And by that's that's where the blending comes in. The blending will help uh, fill in all those photorealistic details without having to put in all the facets. So to get started shading in the facets, I am taking my white color pencil and I'm shading in the top three triangles and then I'm taking the circle and I'm shading this directly opposite uh, with some of the white. I'm not shading it completely. I'm just shading it halfway and definitely watch how I'm shading this um, for all these views because uh, there is a system. I, I definitely wanted to create a system so that way you could apply this to your your drawings and there could be like a process. It isn't just me going through and kind of like, oh, I'll shade this and I'll shade this, uh, which is a way to draw. Like I, that's how I normally draw. But for this to this tutorial, this video, I really wanted you to follow exactly what I'm doing and I wanted you to be able to get the same results. So I've taken my dark red color pencil and I have shaded the bottom three triangle shapes and then I'm taking the direct opposite area on the top circle and shading that so it's kind of halfway. I'm taking my red marker and shade or colored pencil and shading to blend it out a bit. Now I'm taking my white colored pencil and I'm shading in the bottom triangles and I'm doing this kind of a medium level. It's not as dark as the top, but it's it's a medium dark, I would say, or a medium like um, opacity is what I say. I I'm, I'm, want to find the right words uh, to describe this. In these outer triangles, I'm shading about halfway, so that way it looks like the light is kind of catching it and wrapping around. These triangles I'm shading, you can see I'm shading them lighter. I'm not pressing as hard. This is a less opacity, so that way um, the red color can still shine through. And I'm shading these outer facets, I'm, I'm shading halfway. So this is what it is. It's going back and forth. And in opposite areas, I'm shading light and dark because this is how the light will be bouncing and reflecting. And obviously, light reflects through these facets in a real ruby in a much more complicated way. Um, but this simplifies it. This gives it a system so that way you can apply this system to your drawings. Just switching out this light and this dark and just kind of like remembering how things wrap around and then letting that that base color red shine through. Uh, and as you can see, I'm getting halfway and just kind of filling filling everything in, filling little details, kind of like feeling out what needs to be shaded next, not being, um, just kind of being cautious and building in those layers because building in these layers also moves the uh, colored pencil wax around. It moves the color around. So you're almost like not even coloring with the pencil. You're using the pencil to move the color on the paper. And then when you're doing this inner portion, really you can't, this is the part you can't see. It's, it's inside of the ruby shape. So you want to be really gentle. You just want to put those lines in very lightly and then you want to color back over them so it looks like you're staring through it. And that's again just kind of like feeling it out, putting the lines in a little bit at a time, taking your time, um, and just, just enjoying all of this. So I've started with the side view and I am using, you're going to see that I'm using a the exact same system as I did for the top view. So where the bottom three darkest triangles are, they're now at the top. 
and there's half of that white showing and I'm going through and matching up each one of the sides and then I'm drawing in this new portion that we are now just seeing. And again, the light is going to be concentrated in one area and then on the opposite sides, you're putting in the dark areas. This is a simplified way of drawing in all of these facets that still gives a very dimensional look. And you can see that the color is not super even. I'm gonna be working to even that out a little bit. It adds to the transparency, but I will say I will, I do like the color to be evened up a bit. There's a lot of layers of like the colored pencil wax um, that's built up and the pigments. And so they're kind of like, you're, you're kind of moving them around, like I said, as opposed to actually coloring it in. So you want to move those around in a way that kind of evens everything up. So I'm taking this dark red pencil and putting in um, just shading these facets, but not all the way, still leaving a lot of that base red showing and just uh, taking my time. This whole video took me an hour and a half to film, the drawing did from start to finish. And this was after I had practiced quite a bit. Like I was really practicing to um, try to see not really how fast I could go, but how like efficiently I could draw this. So that way you could sit down and draw this just as efficiently. I, my main goal was I really wanted anyone who watched this to be able to do these same effects and, and apply them really quickly, like get something, um, get results, get like the results you want uh, fairly quickly and fairly immediate. These these drawings are pretty large. They're three by three inches. And so I would imagine if you're drawing something, you probably wouldn't even be drawing uh, rubies or diamonds or gems like this large. I would imagine they'd be a little smaller. So your drawings would probably take even even less time if, if they're smaller. It's just that when it's bigger, the color needs to look more even and um, it needs more a little more attention in order for it to get uh, similar detailed results. So I've gone through, I've got this white on the outer edge. I'm blending things out with the red uh, colored pencil and just working to get that color really even, really beautiful, um, and make sure that red is showing through on the piece. And just taking my time, looking at everything, adding in details wherever I can. I've noticed that like on the top view, there were a few areas that I could add more details based on the side view, so I am I added those in. And now I've started the three-quarter view, and this three-quarter view is definitely a combination of the top and the side views. Everything match, the strategies for coloring everything are exact from, from one to the other. And putting in that top view, again, taking that white, colored pencil and sh uh, shading in half of it and then I'm going to be taking this darker red colored pencil and shading in the top half. I'm putting in those three triangles and just following that same system just for um, just for ease. I wanted to see if it would work out like that. I tried a bunch of different ways and it turns out this this is what worked best. It um, it, it just made it easier to be able to reference, have all three drawings reference themselves to create kind of like a, a formula for, for shading this in and getting those results. So that way you could take this and again, just do whatever you needed to with it. Just um, ad adapt it however you, you saw fit or however you needed. I'm taking this white color pencil, getting things shaded in, shading in those uh, facets halfway, not really um, shading them all the way. I still want the red to show through since it's a ruby, and I'm just making sure that the uh, color and the pigments are, are evened out in the drawing and really following what I've already done on the other two drawings um, to make sure that they all, all look similar, all look like the same ruby. 
and I'm still just taking my time. It it takes a li- it takes a while. You're just kind of feeling it out. I will say also make sure that your color pencil pencils are sharpened. Like several times in the video, I stopped to make sure they're sharpened. That's also actually a pretty important point to this because the details of this are so delicate and putting in the details requires like just taking your time and it's just such kind of like delicate fine tuning that it really helps to like have a very sharp colored pencil when you're working on this um, to get all those crisp edges and um, delicate color areas penciled in. And I'm just going through with the black and, or the dark red color and um, and just gently shading in the areas. I'm glad I kind of made a talking mistake and said black instead of red because I found that black was very harsh for this drawing. Um, it just darkened everything up too quickly and so I got a very dark red. I do think that you could use a black but you would have to um, shade it a bit lighter and use your medium red to blend a lot more. Like really, I would say probably a very light layer of black and then blend it out with your medium red. The tough thing is, is when you use black, you're really not gonna be able to use your white um, colored pencil on it too much because it's going to make it look gray. And the good thing about a very dark, red colored pencil is that when you um, shade over it with the white, it just blends out that red. So we're nearing the end and this is probably the most fun part, arguably. It was the, it's the part I look forward to is I'm taking this white ink pen and I'm putting dots at each of the facet points. And this serves a few things. Um, it adds the sparkle in and then also it drops it drops in a little, um, a little blob of ink that you're going to basically be spreading out with your pen. You're almost like not drawing with your pen. You're really drawing with this blob of ink and your pen is like moving the ink across your drawing. Because keep in mind, th the color has now been built up with um, colored pencil, like the wax and the pigment. And so... This ink pen is is kind of dragging along. It's not a smooth line. You don't want it to be. You want it to have this effect of being just like like faceted sparkle and and solid blocks of color really prevent it from looking like a a faceted piece. So you want these kind of like um rough lines that that end up looking like like sparkling sparkling areas like it's just the light showing through. I would say it's pretty it's pretty easy to get really excited doing this and just wanting to keep going and going and even when I was drawing this I was like I don't want to stop but I have to stop and I had to kind of figure out where and when to stop adding in this white ink. I think maybe I could have added a little bit more in but I don't know at some point I was like I really have to stop because if you put too much in, then you've basically put too much in and it just doesn't look right. I don't recommend fully shading any of the facets. I tried doing that. I thought that would be kind of an easy thing to, to shade one all in and it would look very um, like sparkling and, and uh, like like an actual actual piece. It, it doesn't, it adds kind of a thickness um, that really kind of flattens out and takes away from kind of the realistic sparkling look that you might be going for. So I don't, I don't recommend shading one whole facet in. Just kind of drag your, your pen along and just roughly shade in about half of it, as you can see here. One thing I'm also doing with this pen is I keep kind of dotting in the color. I'm, I'm working at dragging the ink across uh, the shape, but then I'm also putting in dots of dots of white, and this is just to help produce that sparkling effect and just uh, just very gentle. You're just kind of like gently putting everything in. Nothing should be too heavy-handed um, because that's what keeps that kind of realistic look, but in a very, very simple way. 
So I've got the side view in. I keep going back to this uh, top view and just kind of like poking around because I keep seeing one more thing I want to add. And then again, like all the sides, all the facets match up on all these views. And so I keep kind of seeing something where I'm like, well, if this is what I did over here, then I should do this on the other drawing too. And the three quarter view is Again, it's a combination of both of these. I put these dots of color in and I'm following the same um, way of drawing as I did in combination of both views and just gently dragging the color along. No really solid lines, kind of rougher lines. So that way, uh, I mean, really this white portion isn't the actual shape. It's light reflecting on the shape and so that's why um, these aren't super solid lines it's just that you're just putting in light at this point and really giving it that effect I think you could also possibly put little sparkle shapes in I didn't want to do that though because I felt like it took away from like the realistic um, look of the piece but you could definitely do that and I, I think it would be beautiful I think it'd look really nice I just wanted to keep this looking very realistic but kind of sketched in uh, to keep that effect and that's it guys we did it I'm going through the whole series I'm, do I'm doing a diamond an emerald a sapphire I've done the ruby here and I plan on doing a pearl I love this series this is so fun thank you for watching this video this is sketch dirt and I'm Marla bye